What's up, everybody? This is Lamar, and this is another political short. Today, we're talking about liberal and conservative views. Probably got dark side. I decide, right? Liberal and conservative views. What is a liberal? What is a conservative? I'm talking about this today because I've had a few inquiries. I know we, when we're talking on our show, TFG Tonight, which comes on every Monday and Friday night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on TFG TV. And you can also find it on YouTube. Subscribe. TFG TV. Um, when we're talking politics, being one of the, the few, in my opinion, um, uh, black run political shows. Yes. Hold the applause. Uh, we talk a lot about liberal, conservative, left, right, red states, blue states, Republican, Democrat. Uh, we never really go into detail on what they are, and we take for granted that everyone understands these terms that we're using, that if you turned on a Fox News or a CNN or MSNBC, all you hear are those terms. And again, one of our goals for the political short is to educate, inform, I think this year, and I'm going to start saying this, and every time I come on camera, is we're going to be the most informed we've ever been as it relates to politics, all right? The most informed ever, particularly in this time when we have a person in the White House that um, we need to get out. We're going to be very informed with anyone else that comes into the office. There's going to be a higher standard, right? There's going to be a higher standard. There's, there's going to be, we're going to have expectations. And we're going to be able to know what to ask for and what not only to ask for, but what to demand, because why? We're going to be the most educated, the most informed politically than we've ever been in history. Is that all right? So let's get to it. What is a liberal and what is a conservative? And we're going to start one by one, if that's all right. So let's start here. Okay. So we'll start here. We're going to start talking about conservative views. First of all, what is a conservative? When you hear the word conservative, what does that actually mean? It basically just means someone that holds tr more traditional values, a traditional attitude um, regarding change, innovation, politics, religion, everything. Very conservative. Not very, but that, that's basically what a conservative is. And conservatives typically are Republicans, right? That's typically just how it goes. Mostly Republicans are considered conservative, okay? And on the on the uh, alternate side of that, liberals are typically Democrats, right? And and basically, a liberal is someone that's open to new behavior, new opinions, new innovation, new thing, new values. They're not stuck into the old traditions. They are open to new new ways of doing things. So that's kind of the difference. A conservative is conservative values. A liberal is liberal, open, willing to try new things. That's the difference. So that that kind of breaks down the definitions of the difference, just of what they are. Okay. I'm gonna drink. All right. So so let's dive into conservative views. First thing I want to talk about is, is abortion. Abortion, as you can see here, abortion. The conservatives are totally against abortion. Conservative Republicans are against abortion. They believe in what you call pro-life, and that's another term you hear thrown around all the time. Pro-life, pro-choice, pro-life, pro-choice. They are pro-life. They believe that, uh, that once that embryo begins to germinate, if you will, or, or well, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but that embryo or whatever, the fetus, I don't know. They believe that at early stages that it's considered a baby, that it's a life. And that you should not be allowed to kill it legally, okay? Um, versus liberals, Democrats typically. Um, they are for abortion, mostly. Now, and now I want to make it plain here. These are not, it's not just a cookie cutter thing. It's not every Democrat that believes all this stuff that I'm going to say. Every conservative Republican doesn't believe everything I'm saying. But these are the basic standard beliefs of each side of a conservatives versus 
the liberals, okay? Now, we have more hybrids these days. I tend to believe that most people are moderates, independents, like me. What does that mean? I'm, I have moderate, uh, moderate beliefs, not traditional, not liberal, moderate. I Meaning I pull a little bit from each side, whatever uh, satisfies my fancy, if you will, whatever works. Uh, for instance, on abortion, I'm liberal when it comes to abortion. I'm pro-choice, just like liberals and liberal Democrats are. They believe a woman should have an option to choose what she does with her body, right? I feel the same way. However, I'm conservative when it comes to economy, which we'll get to that in just a second. I'm conservative in, in that regard, and so does and, and regulation and some other things. So I don't lean fully one way or the other. I'm right pretty much in the middle. I pull what works for my life, my family, and my personal value system. And I think that's the best way to go. That way you can't walk into an election polling booth and do a straight Democratic ticket or a straight Republican ticket. You, 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 when you do that, you're choosing some people that don't necessarily fully encompass your values, even though they're Democrat. All Democrats don't necessarily believe everything, but they still ascribe, subscribe to this particular party. But why? There's a lot of reasons people subscribe to parties. Support is the one thing. It's hard to become president or get elected office um, as an independent. Very difficult because there's a lot of money that comes from the Democratic Party and the Republican Party to push candidates along. A lot of support you get when you're part of that club. So it's, it's all it's all a country club mentality. Be part of the country club, you get help. So you have to choose one or the other, even though you don't subscribe to everything that they believe. All right, continuing on. Guns. Conservatives, serious about their gun. They cling, cling to their gun. They believe in the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, according to the Constitution. Pro-gun rights, right? Protecting themselves. And, no, I, and how do I feel on that? I'm, I, I'm not afraid to let you guys know my feelings on each of these. I told you I'm, I'm pro-choice uh, as it relates to abortion. Uh, as far as it relates to guns, I am. Um, I don't care. So they, everybody don't have to have an opinion on everything. I could, I could care less about gun laws and because I, I see it several ways. I see, I feel like people kill people. Guns don't necessarily kill people, but guns in the wrong hands kill people. Um, do I think they should take guns away from people? No, not necessarily. If I want to get a gun to protect myself in my house, I want to be able to do that. Yeah, do I want someone that has mental problems or or anger issues, PTSD to have access to guns? Uh, nope. So I see it in a lot of different ways. So I don't really have a strong opinion on uh, as it relates to legislation, as it relates to guns. No, no, I, I, I don't care. I don't really care that much. All right, liberals believe that, well, we won't go into liberals, we'll go to liberals in a minute, but conservatives are all about guns. Economy, conservatives believe in lower taxes. They also, they believe that lower taxes um, particularly on businesses as well, encourages business growth. I tend to side with this conservative view. Uh, let's say for an example, I want to break this down. I don't want to try to talk above heads and all that. I want to break it down. Feel free to ask questions uh, in the comments, by the way. Let's say you have a big, let's say you own a big, com big company and a uh, legislator I mean, a uh, senator proposes a bill or a law that it can become law that says, we're going to raise your t taxes on your business uh, on, from 20% to 40%. That kind of pisses you off. And I'm just making up numbers, by the way. That would kind of bother you, I'm sure, right? Your business is making X amount a year. You've projected X amount for next year. And they now tell you that now you're paying 20% of it in taxes. Now you're going to pay 40% in taxes. Hey, I don't want you to be able to tell me that. You know why? Because I've already budgeted and forecasted for what my business is going to do based on what we're paying taxes, based on salaries, based on overhead, all, all that. 
So if I'm going to be, if my projections are now out of whack, because now I have this extra that I'm going to pay in taxes because of this idiot uh, senator, or uh, Congress rather, now I have to figure out where am I going to make up that cost? And what's the main way that people make up, the companies make up costs? Say they have to make up $5 million. They're going to either raise prices of uh, stuff in the store. For instance, Walmart. Walmart may raise their prices on some things. And they may also cut uh, cut their workforce, meaning get, lay some people off, make people go part-time, hiring freeze. So as a business, I think we don't think about the business aspect of things when we're hearing all these people talking in politics, everybody saying all this different stuff, these people running for president, there's all these talking points. And all we hear is businesses have low tax, businesses don't have to pay taxes. Uh, business is this, business is that, rich people this, rich people that. But put yourself in the shoes of the business for a second and decide. And think about if someone was wanting to increase your taxes on a business that you have worked their butt off to, to build. And just on a whim, want to increase your taxes. Okay. So you say, okay. I mean, you don't get a choice in it, but you still want to, you still have to, if you're a good business person, have to figure out how you're going to make up that loss because it's a loss. And good business, man, I mean, you're not going to allow your business to fail. So you have to make it up. And again, the only common sense ways to do that is reduction in force and increasing prices of services and goods. Does that make sense? No one gets to determine how much is too much money for anybody's business, in my opinion. I think that impedes upon my free will and, and a free market. Just my opinion, All right? Next, regulations. Conservatives want less regulations. So you'll see a trend here. Conservative Republicans are more interested in less government uh, overall being involved in our lives. More free freedom, freedom, if you will, and on pretty much all these areas. So less regulations, less red tape. What does that mean? For instance, you want to start a business. And they say, you got to get this license, you got to get this business license, you got to get this permit, you got to get this done, you got to get that done, you got to get, you got to go get a, get a loan, and you got to do, you got to do this to, um, to get approved for this loan, you got to do it. All those are regulations, rules, regulations. Republican conservatives believe in having less of those to make it easier to start businesses and do your thing, if you will, without the government impeding and putting restrictions. That has a downside because you, another thing that falls into those regulations are our, our food, health and safety, health and safety of our food, inspecting our food products to make sure our food is, is people want to lick in the top of the ice cream thing and putting the lips, different things like that, <laughs> different stuff like that. People in the factory aren't doing things they aren't supposed to be. There's a lot of different inspections. So there's, there's a downside to that. But I, again, I'm more so with that, not having as many regulations, but I do understand the need for some regulation. I just think we don't need to overdo it and overcomplicate it to make it difficult for people to uh, start businesses. Again, see a trend here? Republican conservatives, conservative, I just case for conservatives. It's all about business. It's all about it. <laughs> it's all about making it easy for businesses to, to be in business, start in business, uh, hire people, pay wage, give people living wages. And they look at that as though that helps the economy overall. When businesses are able to create jobs, they feel like it overall helps the economy. Whereas, I won't get into that yet. Let's go to military. This is good. Conservatives believe in a strong military. Now, while they're for lower taxes, typically, um, they are definitely for spending more on the military because they believe in uh, America being having a strong front, having the most powerful military in the world. So, yeah. Um, and I want to go back really just for a second to. Um, no, I won't go to that. And um, that, that's basically what conservatives believe. So how about we go now to liberals? 
What do liberals believe, guys? Let's talk about abortion. We are you kind of got it already. Liberals are typically for abortion. They believe in pro-choice versus conservatives believe in pro-life. Pro-choice, a woman's right to choose. I agree with this. And they want more funding for it. Funding to uh, Planned Parenthood and all that. Actually, Planned Parenthood turned down some money um, because the government was going to give them some money. However, they said they could not use it for abortion. So they turned down billions of dollars. Interesting, huh? Okay. Guns. Liberals believe in um, their pro-gun control, having stricter regulations determined on who can get guns, who who uh, on the way that you access these guns, having a, a database, things of that nature. I agree. With, I I can agree with some of that. I'm not too. I don't, I don't have a big, big problem with that. Just like with the conservative side, I'm kind of very in the middle on guns. Economy. Liberals believe in higher taxes for the rich. So basically they believe in my my own words is you work your butt off, you make you finally get to a point where everybody most people are trying to do is work their butt off, make some money, get to a place where they have financial freedom. And when you do this, your tax rate needs to go up higher than everybody else's because you need to help everybody else once you get to the top. That's basically what they believe. Higher taxes because they want and they, what they want what do they want to do with this extra money that the rich people they want the rich people to pay. They want them to they want to put that money towards welfare and other social programs to help what they consider middle class and poor people. I how do I feel about it? I'm not a fan of higher taxes for the rich. Um, many people be like, "What? Why not? Why are you not? They are rich. They just like a business. I don't think you can determine how much is enough money for somebody. And I think people should have the autonomy and the freedom to do what they want with their money. Some people are good people, good-hearted people. Some are not. We don't get to judge those folks. I think if a person wants to give back and give to uh, uh, charities and things of that nature, it should be their own um, their own business if they choose to do that. It should be their own decision." It shouldn't be forced by the government, in my opinion. It takes away freedom, in my opinion. Um, but I like, I believe in a flat tax, which for some reason nobody's um, put, trying to push that through. Meaning, uh, everybody's, let's say your tax rate was 30%. Let's say everybody's tax rate, I'll say your tax rate is 30% if you make up to 60000 a year. You make up to 100000 a year, say it's 35%. I'm, I'm just using fake numbers, by the way. That's right now, the more you make, the more your percentage is that you pay in taxes, which is ridiculous. I got a raise last year and I almost uh, blew my top. I already believe this way anyway, but it made me more so believe that way when I got my raise last year. And uh, I believe it should be the same tax rate for everybody because if we're all paying 20%, if I make 150000 a year, and you make 40000 a year, my 20% is still more than your 20%, right? But the way it is now, you could be making forty a year, I make 150000 a year, you pay 20% in tax, twenty percent in taxes, I pay 40% in taxes. And I'm already going to be giving more than it's, it's robbery. And I hate it. I think it's stupid. It's the worst thing ever. But that's what liberal Democrats like. And it works. Because you know what the campaign on? The campaign on the Republicans want to raise the Republicans want to have rich people pay less in taxes, and they want to take away your social programs, which include welfare, housing, things of that nature. That's what they say. So they say. In my opinion, they're messing with the heartstrings and, and the pocketbook of the people, the middle class and the poor, by telling them they'll take away your, your goodies. So. As you can tell, I'm passionate about that one. I think it's very stupid. I think it's modern day slavery. I don't go so far as to say that. I know many of you will disagree on that. Um, but I think um, at some point, while I've been a recipient of social programs or welfare in the past, uh, I believe that you should be on it for a certain period of time and get off. Otherwise, if you're pacified with that for too long, you will never get back on your feet 
and do anything for yourself. You will always rely on the government. And I think the Democratic Party liberals bank on that. And they keep telling you, we're going to make sure we keep giving it to you, keep giving it to you, keep giving it to you. You never have to do anything on your own. But thank goodness I have a different mindset. Uh, my wife and I, we and we decided, nope, we're, we're not going to be on this anymore. This 30 to 60 days, we're getting off of this, and we're going to get some jobs. Better jobs. All right, we're going to school. Anyway, on to the next. Regulations. Liberals believe in more and stricter regulations. They believe in protecting. Uh, they, they feel like the government has the, the job to protect us, sometimes from ourselves. Um, more government involvement, such as laws surrounding protecting you, the EPA, for example, um, um, that's the Environmental Protection Agency, lender laws protecting you when you're going to buy a house and getting a loan, laws that protect you to make sure you're not being uh, taken advantage of, um, license different licenses that are required for different things to make sure people are qualified and have the right training for different things. So that's what, and I, again, I'm kind of split on that a little bit. I prefer not to have too much regulation, but I think some regulation is definitely needed. As it relates to military, there was believe in a basic military and less spending on it. They feel like we spend way too much on the military uh, right now. All right, so those are the, the General differences as it relates to conservatives versus liberals. Again, it's not just black and white. Every liberal doesn't necessarily uh, ascribe to subscribe to every single thing that's on this list. Every conservative doesn't necessarily um, believe in everything that's on that list. There's a mesh, but because it's a we live America is a two party system, um, people choose to join a club and be a part of that club. And so when they have a difference in opinion and they want to propose something that's not necessarily, for instance, a Democratic view, if you're a Democrat, it's very difficult for them to get it pushed through because they're not going to get any support from their folks. You know, so politics is the devil, unfortunately, and that's why nothing gets done. This has been a political short. I'm the one that's not great.